All right, I think we are rolling. This will be our uh, second podcast. Hey, Ian, how's it going? It's going great, Peter. How are you, dude? Uh, happy, uh, happy Kuzia Day. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was very exciting. Um, from your point of view, what was it like? Um, well, my point of view was like uh, from my bedroom and like my couch downstairs, like watching people tweet and stuff. But uh, I don't know. I think I think it's great. Um, I think people are going to be really happy, or people are really happy to realize that like he's not like some bitter, like not. I don't know, like a, a held back person. Like he was smiling in every photograph, and he was he charmed the pants off of the 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 press corps, and you know, hundreds of fans signing stuff for fans. I think all that stuff probably goes a long way to uh, doing away with some of the like this prima donna. I believe when I see it, he's only in it for himself. That kind of stuff. Like so, all our all our commenters on Facebook. Yeah, pretty much just the <laughs> Facebook people. <laughs> we're just always cranky and angry. But but you you were there. I kind of. I'm, to people listening, we haven't we haven't spoken about this at all yet. So, so Ian, tell me what happened other than you know you getting like three hours of sleep. Yeah, well, well, actually, let's go into that a little bit. You, uh, this the, is actually the, kind of you a funny and Chris story. need to fix your sleep habits. <laughs> yeah, so so on on was it, it was Saturday, um, like we saw we got the news that uh, Kuznetsov had signed the ELC or they had agreed to terms or whatever mm. it was, um. You know that, that Saturday at like one o'clock, and I'm I'm going to work out. I've already been up for like five six hours. And I call Ian. I'm like, Ian, you got it. You got to cover this story. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm going in communicado. He's like, I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hear that Chris was asleep too. Yep. <laughs> you guys need to, man. So, but I mean, to be fair, Ian, you're up at like two o'clock in the morning every night. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so go ahead. Um, well, first of all, it kind of started with uh, yesterday in, in preparation of 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 Kuzia practicing. We knew we were going to have Igor and Chris there. Um, I decided. Uh, that we were going to have our own Instagram account. And so uh, I put that up, and one of the things that I have set on my Instagram account, my, my personal one, is that um, I have notifications set on my iPad, so it lights up whenever I get a follower. <laughs> I know where so, this is going, so stupidly, I promoted it right before bed, <laughs> and so I fell asleep around 1 or 2, and uh, this was his daylight saving, so it was 3 a.m. at this point. And I, I, I start trying to fall asleep, and, and right as I'm about to, the iPad starts lighting up. Yeah. And then 10 minutes later, it keeps lighting up. So I only got about an hour or two of sleep. So around 5.30, uh, you know, uh, what was it, 6.30 then, I woke up, and uh, I met, I was actually the first one there, which for me is a big deal. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I got there around 8.02, 8.03, and um, Kuzia was there already on the ice with Adam Oates. And oh, that really? was really cool. I, I didn't know it was on the ice. Yeah, today. Oates, that's great. you know, that's one of those practices where you assume it's just like a personal workout. You don't really assume uh, that that the head coach is going to be there. Yeah. But Oates was there. He was interacting with him. Uh, Kuzia did a bunch of uh, slap shot uh, drills. He did uh, a lot of skating, and um, you know, he he looked he looked about how we you know I, he looked exactly the same as he was in the KHL. He looks very very talented. Um, and so, uh, that whole process was, was really, really fun. Uh, and then later he did a uh, press conference and they had him do a press conference in the back area. And so, in the uh, back area. yeah, in the back area where, remember those chairs that we had? That they oh had yeah. In that, pre- in that room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, those are great chairs. <laughs> you should probably tell that story later, but I love uh, their chairs. <laughs> So uh, he he did the press conference, uh, press conference back there, and uh, you know uh, Chuck Ormley, Katie, uh, Adam Vingan, everybody asked a bunch of questions. Ian's name dropping beat writers right now. Yeah, and uh, so about ten or twelve minutes through, you know, they basically asked all the questions they asked. Yeah. Now there was kind of like a break, and no, you know, nobody had been asking anything, and so uh, I just was like, this is my moment to ask something. I was right. like, I felt, I felt bold. Oh, this is okay. Keep going, keep going. This is exciting. Okay. I, I usually don't ask anything, yeah, because I don't want to be on video. And so, <laughs> and so, this is what happened: is that, you know, again, they've asked all the simple questions. They asked about his dog. They asked about his wife. They asked where he's living. They asked what line he's going to play. Is he going to play on Monday night against the Penguins? Mm-hmm. So they asked all that. So I go, so Evgeny, um, you know, in the KHL, you played a lot with former Washington Capital Jan Bulis. Yeah. And so I go, 
how has how has Jan kind of helped prepare you for the NHL? Because you've been playing with him for three years. And so he looks at me really confused. And, it, and he looks to, to Sergey, the uh, PR, the lead PR guy who knows Russian, and and Sergey translates it for him. And Kuzia looks at him and goes, "Uh." Uh-uh. And and Sergey, I think it was Sergey or Evgeny, he goes, "That that doesn't help either." And so and so uh, so then Kuzia, I think, says, um, "You know, uh, he helped me. He he doesn't help me that much. Uh, you know, he had minus 10. And then uh, George oh, pipes like help? in. Yeah. <laughs> and then George McPhee, he was he was in the room, kind of like there was some tables in the back, and he was sitting directly behind me, and he was kind of laughing during the whole question. And, uh, and uh, you know, Kuzi says, you know, he, he didn't really help me at all. Yeah. And so uh, George pipes in, well, that's why he's still not a capital anymore. <laughs> and, and everybody just broke up laughing. So, I mean, he's a plug, right? I mean, he's... I well, I, th- I thought it's you know that that Bullis would have some kind of impact on well, Kuzia so, well, in so some I, way, but I mean, I guess you're you're going for like you know, tell me about what Bullis told you about North America or the Caps organization, yeah. And I guess all that Kuznetsov got out of it was he didn't help me score at all, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, which makes sense. <laughs> That's great but, that George is piping in. On yeah, so George there. piped in, and it was kind of funny just because I always wondered why they traded Bullis and. Uh, you know, because I thought he was a great young player. He had a decent career, but uh, George piping in behind me was hilarious. Um, I, I have to ask you a question. Yeah, go ahead. So this photograph <laughs> was shared by um, the Washington Capitals on their Instagram earlier today. Whose iPad is this right here? That's actually not an iPad, and oh, it's, it's not, not my tablet. <laughs> okay, right. but it's, you were it's... in fact taking photographs yes. with your iPad. <laughs> So this is not an iPad. This is somebody else. Who's this? I'm is? actually I'm actually directly to the left of That's, the I've, CSN cameraman who kind of hip checked me. <laughs> when I, when I was I was actually taking iPad photos from behind the fans because I was actually videoing. Uh, they they actually had like a little game at the end where uh, Nemish and all the other equipment guys uh, they were uh, they were shooting the puck the length of the ice to try to score empty net goals. Yeah. Uh, from the other net. And so uh, Kuzia did like a handshake or a fist bump, and I was getting video of that. And then he left the ice, and then I was like, "Oh crap, he's gonna start signing autographs." So I I kind of ran over there. I got some uh, I got some photos from behind, and then I I went over to the side. But that was that was actually Sky Kirstein's of uh, Sky uses an iPad to take photos. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's good. I mean, I was trying to put up some angles together. I was like, does this make sense? This one and this one over here. But Chris was making fun of me, and I actually pointed it out that I wasn't the only one. And he said, that doesn't make it any better. No, so. just because more people are wrong doesn't mean you're less wrong <laughs> than you already are. So so the question we're getting a lot, and I, I guess uh, he might have answered a little bit in the press conference today, but I kind of want to get your opinion on it. Yeah, sure. Is uh, where are we going to see Kuznetsov play in the lineup? Or not really where are we going to see him, but where do you think we'll see him? What, what's your prediction, or where do you think he ought to be? Like, which I guess is two different questions, I, right? I, I think he ought to be on the first line with Ovechkin and Backstrom. So and on the wing, so it would be like Kuznetsov, Backstrom, Ovechkin? Yeah. Mm-hmm. With with Ovi shooting right, with, with Kuznetsov shooting left, um, I, think, I think Kuznetsov is kind of the natural middleman between the two skill skill sets. Meaning there. he's got scoring and playmaking. He's exactly. not pure one or the other like Backstrom's a pure playmaker and Ovi's a pure scorer. Exactly. So so that's what you think should happen. What do yeah. you think will happen? You know, that's and that's a good question. I actually I don't have a prediction. I I would assume he's going to be on the top 6. So he may be on the the second line. Mm-hmm. He, they may put him with um with uh, Dustin Penner. Maybe if he gets bumped up to the second line, but I, yeah, um, but isn't I mean Dustin? It, it seems like Dustin Penner's on the left wing, right? Yeah. So I, I think I yeah. my guess is that they'll wherever they are, they won't touch each other. Yeah. Like I don't, maybe that means that Penner goes up to the top line. Mm-hmm. I don't know, and, and they, they might want to protect him on minutes, so maybe he'll be on the third wing of the first game. I don't know. I think, or the third line, in the first first game. I think it's one of those deals where I would start him on the first line, and the reason being is that he is living with Ovechkin. Yeah. He has a Russian Russian language speaker. His English is good, mm-hmm. and I don't think talking Russian is the biggest deal, but he has a comfort with Ovechkin, and those two are going to be very close. Yeah. you know. And the first line hasn't been scoring at even strength at all. 
you know? Yeah. And back, he can speak a little bit of Russian. Yeah. Because he well, spent, well, a little bit. <laughs> because he spent, what, these six months yeah. in, in Russia and in He Moscow. knows a few words, at, at the very least. Oh, well, I mean, he knows, like, pass it. You know, like, <laughs> the, the stuff that they're yelling at in, in the KHL. So, well, and it, it's really tough to predict what's going to happen. And I don't know, you probably didn't even get a chance to read it because of your how crazy your day has been. But my, in, like, the, the snapshot today, yeah. I was talking about, you know, what, what Oates will do with this young talent. Because we've seen what, you know, to varying degrees of success, mm. we've had, you know, Tom Wilson's you know, banishment to the fourth line. We've had sort of Connor Carrick having a rough time when his in his rookie year in the NHL. Uh, you know, there's not not necessarily Vopati in the same boat, but um, Schmidt, who by all rights probably should be an NHL defenseman with his performance so far. What happens next with Kuznetsov, I think, is terrifically important for who Adam Oates is as a coach. How he's going to handle some more young talent mm-hmm. because coming down the pipeline, there's some really good. There's Madison Bowie. There's Andre Burakovsky, like there's there's Riley Barber, Riley Barber there there. So there's there's tons of really good talent coming up. Mm-hmm. What happens? How is Adam Oates going to be a coach I, for those young guys? And I think this is a good test for that. You know, and I think I think the other thing is too is that um, with the way he's handled Tom Wilson, I think a lot of people are afraid of how he's going to handle Kuznetsov. Again, I think that it might be a little bit more. Uh, it, it might be too much for him to handle. Uh, to maybe play 20 minutes against the Pittsburgh Penguins on the first line in his mm-hmm. first NHL game, but he's going to be so jacked up because it's his first game. Um, he's been play- he's been playing about 22, 24 minutes uh, with Tractor Teddy events. Um, and they're covering know, the- a lot more ice. Yeah. And when they're scanning those big ranks, like yeah. the, that, that's a you can measure it in miles the difference <laughs> in workout. Like I mean seriously, like yeah. like. It, it's a, there's a ton of difference in skating. So, like as far as like conditioning is concerned, I bet he's fine. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not worried at all about conditioning. I'm gonna be more interested to see how he how his neutral zone play is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, George kind of talked about it too. How uh, Europeans and Russians sometimes they circle too much instead of go forward. Um, North south instead of east west. Mm-hmm. And and the other thing too is just him holding the puck too long. How he's gonna handle hits. Um, those are the things I'm more concerned about. He, he is a pretty good defensive player, and that's, for me, usually a measure of how good a prospect mm-hmm. is going to kind of blend in. You well, know? So, so, like, uh, the, the, the character, the player profile I'm most worried about him matching is one that's fresh in my memory because yeah. we saw him last night, uh, Ribeiro. Mm-hmm. Like, Mike Ribeiro, uh, you know, wasn't bad in his own end. And he was actually pretty strong on the puck getting into defensive zone, but mm-hmm. he was very into north-south, sort of not moving towards the net or away from the net. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he uh, didn't actually generate any offensive zone. He didn't generate a whole lot of offense. Mm-hmm. Like, he had the puck for a long time. Yeah. But, like, uh, he, he didn't really help out Ovechkin. I, I hope that that's not the player he is, and I, that, that Kuznetsov is. And I, uh, I, I, I think one thing that we've talked about a little bit, and I'd like to sort of share it with the people on the podcast, is uh, Kuznetsov's penalty kill thesis. <laughs> <laughs> so like, tell me if I'm, I'm doing this wrong, but like uh, Kuznetsov, I guess he was in college, or he got his, he got like a master's thesis <laughs> in killing off penalties in hockey. I don't I have no idea what I mean. What is the deal there? I, oh God, it's been so long. Uh, he went to like a, a Chelyabinsk college, uh, and yeah, he was he was Chelyatech. studying yeah <laughs> something like that, and uh, yeah, for his thesis, he he did it on penalty killing, and they did this really silly story about how like oh his it, you know it's like one of those weird russian sucking up stories like yeah oh he passed the thesis with with with, with flying colors was this on russia today was that yeah. <laughs> no, it like, wasn't you know, no it was on some it was on some weird chelly event site mm-hmm. uh like one of the newspapers there um like that if, that, if that was... paper's like public academia we could probably find it somewhere <laughs> and then you know just drive fedor or Igor mad like hey listen <laughs> Translate this entire fourteen-page paper, <laughs> and we're gonna publish it. No one's gonna read it. Uh, no one would read it, but that's the kind of stuff I want to do. I don't want to be, you know what I mean? I don't care what the people. Want. That's what I want. <laughs> so, so, so Kuznetsov, we got we have uh, games on Monday and Tuesday, uh, home and home against the Penguins. He's gonna get somewhere between tw- uh, thirty, twenty-five, and forty minutes. Yeah, in those two games combined. We're gonna know a crap load about him. By then, and and I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's changes in the lineup or you know, knowing that he's a new guy, I wouldn't. My personal prediction is that he gets fourth line minutes, uh, just just in game one. Yeah. Right? So we'll see him somewhere between well, 
the, the Caps get seven minutes on their fourth line. Most other teams yeah. will do around 11. But we shall see. But I, my guess is that he's pretty protected and sheltered, at least as far as like total minutes is concerned, in game one. By game two, maybe we'll see him in the top six. I think that makes a lot more sense. And here's something for you, is, and I was thinking about it too, is that the Capitals' power play is has been, you know... With like up there, uh, he's been really crashing the net, and like his work the other night of just blocking the goalie and, mm-hmm. and, and setting up in the crease, um, he he over the last couple of games has been a fantastic player. The power play looks good. Where where you're gonna screw up is if you get Kuznetsov power play minutes right now. That's not gonna help the team. You know he needs to get he needs to move into that gradually. But first line minutes at even strength, I can see that. Second line minutes at even strength. Let's see what he can do and adjust as you go along because you have a bunch of NHL veterans back there. I mean, this team is, you know, I this I, team is pretty old. You know? I th- yeah, you're less true. They are getting older. But you're absolutely right about the power play. I mean, the, the, the Capitals' power play is a good power play. I think it's still top five in the mm-hmm. league. It's not broke. Don't fix it. In fact, they should just keep doing that as long as they possibly exactly. can. I love that Brower scored him from Ovi spot last night. But but the 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 thing where they need help is even strength, yes, and particularly exactly. on the top line. There's this, uh, there's this really good chart that shows the differential between puck possession and goals uh-huh. uh, by top lines versus everyone else. Mm. And like um, you can see, like with the Penguins, they're like biggest in the lead, like both in the, the, like the Crosby line is scoring way more than everybody else. Mm. Uh, both and they're having the puck more, right? Mm-hmm. When you get to the Capitals. The top line has pretty great, pretty terrific possession overall, but they're actually scoring less than the other lines be- be- for whatever reason. I think that that would be a great spot for Kuznetsov. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, if it doesn't happen in the next couple of games, maybe it'll happen in the beginning of next year. But I, but the Caps need help at even strength. It's the most important part of the game right now, and, and it, it may be a part where he can be a shot in the arm. And I think the I think the thing I told you, uh, you and Chris, uh, is that when you have a guy like Kuznetsov, no one knows what he's going to do. Yeah. This isn't like shooting on Henrik Lundqvist. Where you go, uh, high glove side, you know. Uh, this is a guy where you're not, you don't know what he's gonna do. Yeah. If he's gonna pass in the corner, if he's gonna carry it, what his moves are. There's not a book on him. So it's 2006 I think, Ovechkin or 2005 Ovechkin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, like the move, no one knew about the move. You could get away with it for 50, 60 straight games. Yeah. Um, so I think with you wanna you wanna take advantage of this time, and you really really just I really want to see what he can do. Let him be creative, and you know a lot of. As guys grow in the NHL, they become more predictable. Like, even mm-hmm. Ovechkin now is kind of predictable about where he's going to go on the power play, how he's going to forecheck, what he's going to do in the offensive zone. But, you know, let's take advantage of this time. I, I, I hope they just throw him out in the first line. If they need to make adjustments, they, they, have, some, they have a bunch of guys who can step in and help. But um, let's see if it's going to work. I don't, think, I don't think it can hurt like, at this point. And, like, they're, but, they're having enough trouble that I think it makes sense to be a little bit more dramatic and, and do something exactly. pretty bold. So, so that's one of the biggest changes that we're going to see, but there's a bunch of other changes. Maybe we can run through this real yeah, quick. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. So the trade deadline was last week. Uh, the big acquisitions, the two big acquisitions was Dustin Penner, who we talked about a little bit before, who I think is like a, a Knublian type, sorry, a Mike Knubel type player. He's big and plotting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's not necessarily fast. <laughs> Not necessarily great on the puck, but he's you know gigantic and really good at getting right up into the net, which I think is a terrific asset and probably something that the team's been short-staffed on for, well, literally until Knubel stopped playing. Can we can we actually talk about that for a second? You know, I um with Penner, I, the my only concern with him is that he seems very similar to Troy Brower. Seems very similar mm-hmm. to Brooks. Like he's you know. Maybe not Brooks, but yeah. I mean, well, when, when Brooks plays Knubel style, yeah, absolutely, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, maybe with Ward and Shamara too. He, like, I don't know. I I, w- I was underwhelmed with his first couple of games. I think his hockey sense is through the roof. Mm-hmm. I think he's, but he is he he does he is a little bit of plotting getting getting off the ice. <laughs> that's true. But the, but I mean, the team needs a variety of of role players, and you you made a good point about this before the Olympics that you know teams like squads need players to occupy different character types and i yeah. think he and i know you're I, you get your point is like you're worried that there's a glut of yeah. similar players and i mm-hmm. totally agree that between chimera brower like and ward you got four players who are a little bit different in size and a little bit different style but more or less are the same kind of yeah unimpressive flash un, not flashy stuff but you know sort of your meat and potatoes right in exactly fact, they call them the meat and potatoes line a lot uh i, I think dustin penner's got a little bit more panache uh, mm-hmm. a little more like uh Willingness to do great, like like my my disappointment with Brower had been that he had not lived up to the Knubel replacement that he was touted to yeah. be, and that's why he's not you know he, that's why it hadn't 
obviously once Ovi switched to the other wing and he went away. But when Canula got bumped off that top line, I was a sourpuss for a long time because mm-hmm. uh, I thought he should have been there. And Brower didn't really help out. In fact, we you know we I had all those like Ovi stats. I forget. It was like I guess it was like halfway through the season. I was talking about how line mates with Ovi were doing worse and worse and generating offense mm-hmm. through the years. And when Knubel left on uh, that top line, but both you know Vetchkin was generating fewer shots individually, but also his line mates were. And I think I, I think there was a big drop off once Knubel left that top line. And I'm hoping that Dustin Penner can, if, even if he's not playing with Ovi, can do something like that. I, I do think that if you have Ovi and Backstrom on the line, it's really good to have a guy like uh, uh, Dustin Penner who would go to the net. Exactly. Uh, and take those rebounds. And maybe maybe Kuznetsov could do that well. Or maybe mm-hmm. having Kuznets, Kuznetsov and uh, Backstrom carrying the puck more can get can have that puck long enough to get Ovi to a high-risk shot mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm excited to see how it works out. Um, a lot of my enthusiasm is just enthusiasm by proxy because of the time we spent with Anna when she was the biggest <laughs> Dustin Penner fan. And it was like it was like him and Pukanik. Pukanik. Thomas Pukanik. But that's not how like no? Joe B says it. There's the the C at the end gets I don't know French people, the uh, Canadian French people, French Canadian people. Um, to, to Dustin Penner was the first one. The other big one, gigantic one, was getting Halak into the team. Um, which I don't. I, I, what are your, what are your thoughts on on Halak and, and moving Nuvi out? Michael Neuvert, who had been with the team since he was a pup. I think uh, you know at first I was really disappointed with the trade when it was just Halak for uh, Neuvert, but when they got rid of that. Bad contract uh, by Klesla. Uh, it was. I'm sorry, you will no longer be in the NHL and do not want to play with the Sabres. Slava Malamud was was. Uh, he oh, was I like, bet. He was. He was like. He's a noted uh, Sabres fan, and and he he was like that was the dagger. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it's fine that he doesn't play. No one cares. He does but the, it's just, like, it's he such does a Sabres the grieved thing. Sabres fan routine so well. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, he's like a Sox fan pre 2004. He's like, what can get worse? It's, it's oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So so everybody, uh, uh, Rostislav, that's that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Rostislav Klesla was a longtime uh, defender. Uh, he played for Phoenix for a couple years. The Caps acquired him as an add-in asset as part of the ERAT trade, sending Martin ERAT out of town, and uh, immediately dealt him, and it's like about 2.5, 3 million, somewhere around 2. that. 2.9. 2.9. 2. 9. That's a $3 million contract to Buffalo as part of the Halak trade. Uh, as soon as he gets there, he's like, you know what? I'm done. Yep, yep. I'm, I'm just done with this because they were they're probably going to send him down to the Americans or to the I think their HL team is yeah. Rochester, right? Yeah, and I think the thing is too is uh, he gives up about I don't know he loses at least one or two paychecks. So goodbye five hundred thousand dollars. That's a that's that's a pretty big like yeah. I mean, I would just get through it, you know, just to, to collect a paycheck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just well, pout the entire time. So, so, I mean, just to jump back real quick. <laughs> yeah. The amount of money that Evgeny Kuznetsov is giving up to play with the Washington Capitals. He's going to make $900,000 this year yeah. next year, right? Yes. Uh, you know, his, his $900,000 this year is prorated, so he's only going to get a he, fraction of it. And he might have bonuses that he could yeah. attain, but it's, it's, it's a million. Yeah. But what he, I mean, he's probably giving up more than 10 times that in Russia. <laughs> like, he, they would have literally backed, they would not have literally, they would have figuratively backed a truck named Evgeny Kuznetsov. <laughs> Up to his house, filled with cash. I yeah, I, I think a lot of people don't give him enough credit for how much he wanted to uh, play in the NHL. And and I found out something interesting today. I think uh, his 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 wife is his wife's father is a is like a, a businessman or something in Chelly events. And uh, that might have also had an impact on him staying. Is it industrial farmware? Or is it... <laughs> I don't know. He might be with the government. I don't know. I- Igor was telling me. Uh, Igor and Slava were talking about it today in the uh, media room, and and they were like, "Well, yeah, the Olympics was part of it, but that, but they thought that he he just married his daughter. You know, mm-hmm. they they really wanted him to stay and give back to Tractor." Uh, and and Chelly events, and uh, I thought that that was really interesting. He seems like a family dude, a very young family dude. To I me. think not I that think I know anything about him, but a lot of people, you know, have really given him the shaft. But I, I really think he's a great guy. Yeah. Um, and I felt that way since I first met him. Uh, it's he is so enthusiastic. I mean, this it, you could see, like you said, with all the smiles and all the photos. Mm-hmm. I mean, we didn't pick those photos. Literally, every photo was him yeah. smiling. Yeah. He loves he loves hockey. He's really happy to be here, and and that's a great thing. So, so, so um, yes. Uh, so back to Halak and Nuvi. So, yeah. um, I guess to, to sort of paint the picture, uh, Neuvert had been a goalie with the Capitals. Uh, well, really with the Bears. In fact, he won a Calder Cup with the mm-hmm. Bears. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess that was 2010. Um, and then he 
uh, came up. He sort of lost the first slot to uh, Semyon Varlama for a while. Uh, Varla left town. Or actually, uh, he played the uh, 2011 playoff series against like Tampa, and I think yeah. he, I think the Caps beat the Rangers in the first round of that. Um, and he, frankly, I, th- I think he might have been the the team's. Oh no, uh, the, he was a, he was a weak point in the second series. Um, that was the one where Tampa could just score on a whim. <laughs> but the, but uh, also on top of that. Uh, uh, Guy Boucher really outcoached Boudreau in that series. Anyway, so following that, uh, uh, we had uh, oh my gosh, um, bald dude, Vakun, <laughs> bald dude. <laughs> bald dude. <laughs> Takes me a second. Uh, Vakun came to Vakun. If you're Mike Vogel, Vakun came to town and sort of seized the, the number one slot. And then I guess after that, Holpe really was was the dude. And and once Grubauer got all those starts in December, Nuvi's like, you know what? I think I'm probably not going to get a chance at number one here, so I, I want to leave. And apparently he was very nice about it, very sort of mm-hmm. subtle in talking to George McPhee. Uh, and George McPhee, you know, as much criticism we are, as we give him, he is a stand-up dude. And if somebody says, you know, I think I'd like to, to give it a shot somewhere else, he will make that happen. That's what he did with Marty Erat. That's what he did with Neubert. That's what he did with Eric Fair when Eric Fair wanted to go to Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. Like, like he lets dudes, you know, follow their their – Destiny wherever they want to go. So mm-hmm. I, I I genuinely respect that about him. And I know people are sort of sore about that. I don't know. What, what, what's your take on, on Neuver? First of all, what do you think of him as a goalie? And what do you think of him leaving town? I think he's... Um, it's hard to say. I, I think he could be a top 25 goalie in this league. Um, you know, I, I think he's consistent. He has a really, really weird style. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, but, you know, he's had a lot of great stretches for the Caps, and really his only undoing has been his injuries. That's right. His random, bizarre injuries. Um, his, his numbers, uh, I think he's right now like right like a 9-10. A little below which, which is below average, but yeah. it's not a huge sample. In fact, I think he's faced fewer shots in his career than Holpe has. And, for, you know, and, and he's been in the league twice as long. So we may not yet know where he is. He's a, he's a Dave Pryor draft pick, mm-hmm. and I think... And he's the former uh, goalie coach of the Cavs, and he he had a really good eye for talent. Um, so I don't I don't really bet against Dave Pryor. I think Neuvert will be a good goalie in this league if he gets an opportunity and he stays healthy. Uh, he can get that opportunity in Buffalo, but mm-hmm. Buffalo is one of the worst teams in the history of the league. Maybe maybe the you know first year of the Caps was worse, but they see a ton of shots yeah. every game. I think they're I think they're 29th or 30th in the league in shots allowed. I think it's somewhere around like 33 or 34 shots. He's just going to get eaten alive. It's going to be rough yeah. because they're in the middle of a rebuild. I mean, yeah. this is basically you know 2004 but, Caps for for Buffalo. They're they're going through a very drastic rebuild. I think they're doing it fairly well so far, yeah, I do. other than letting Kles go. <laughs> but but uh, I don't know. I I have high esteem for him as a goalie. I wish the best for him. But I think I think it was a really savvy move by the Caps to get an upgrade in goaltending without while also freeing up a lot of salary for next year so they can re-sign yeah. Grabowski. Yeah. I think I think a lot of what they did in that trade deadline was a lot was about locking up the guys they need to lock up for next year and one of those guys is Grabowski mm-hmm. who is hurt this year and we really haven't gotten out of him what we needed to get out of him. Uh, and he, his injuries have been a disappointment but when he's on the ice he's been just terrific. What he did between Shamir and Ward yeah. uh, was just so that was such a big boost to the team when they needed it. Uh, I, I have a feeling that freeing up that cash, even if they're not expecting to bring in a whole lot of UFAs over the summer, yeah, um, was a lot of it about making sure that Grabowski gets his raise so that he can get a multi-year deal because yeah. he deserves it and he's a you know top-tier player and one of George McPhee's biggest uh, you know accomplishments. Yeah, and, and people will sort of say like, "Oh, Rush Machine, you've been so pessimistic and blah 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 <laughs> lately." I don't know if you've seen some of those coming through. Um, uh, I don't want anyone to think that we have an axe to grind against anybody. I think. Uh, whatever criticisms we have for McPhee or for Oates, there are definitely countervailing and counterbalancing things that they have done, which are fantastic. And yeah. I think Alex Ovechkin is the biggest feather in the cap of, of of Adam Oates, moving to the opposite wing, doing the things he did on the power play. Those are terrific things that you cannot take away from Adam Oates. Mm-hmm. Even though we have dis- we, I mean, but we have had discussions about how we think that some of the even strength production that we've seen out of Ovi is more organic mm-hmm. than coach led. Uh, which we talked about in the last podcast, and and George McPhee, you know, as much as we say that the you know, the Marty Erat Philip Forsberg thing was a fiasco, and I think at this point it's indisputably so. Yeah, uh, he did a fantastic job taking away a, what was considered a toxic asset by a bunch of dummies in Toronto, and turning it into a real playmaker for the Capitals and, and Grabowski. And so I think moving some of these dudes like he did with the Erat and Neuvert 
saves him, gives him enough, you know, uh, levity to do what he needs, enough leeway to do what he needs to do with Grabowski, you know, hopefully soon. You know, on top of that, too, it's it's funny. We do criticize, uh, but I think we're, we're honest. The, the funny thing is, is, I mean, like GMGM GM and, and Oates, I mean, I, I fucking love them personally. I mean, I... So I, that's the first F-bomb on the podcast. <laughs> I do. Sorry, I mean, iTunes. <laughs> but, I, you know, I, I personally, I you know, I, McPhee is always hilarious, such a gracious person whenever I come, you know, I, I remember shaking his hand when I was like 14 before like the Tampa Bay series where Yager was playing and, and they lost. Um, you know, I, I I shook his hand right where the, the player's players entrance was. And, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. Um, kind of going back uh, to the goaltenders, I was kind of, you know, we've had Neuvert, we've had Holpe all year, uh, and, and Grubauer too. Well, one thing that I kind of want to talk about is it's amazing how they messed up that situation so bad with having... Holtby and Grubauer and forcing Neuvert to... I, personally, I think they created that situation themselves. I totally agree. And then and then George goes around and then trades Neuvert, gives him a, a perfect situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also should make Grubauer happy because he just got this amazing opportunity. And now he's projected to be a backup next year. So they're giving him a huge opportunity. Yeah. So they made a bunch of people happy with that trade, but they also created that situation themselves, which is unnecessary. Right? By, first by having uh, defensive weaknesses both in, in systems and on the roster, which yeah. we've been talking about all year. Yeah. And second in bringing up the triad of goalies in which <laughs> you know all three of them are, are, are bitter or unhappy to some extent. I guess Grubauer was okay with it. He, yeah. he was making NHL money. But, but you know, Holpe was beyond pissed, or at least cranky for most of December. As he and, should have been. Yeah, and, and, and some of it should be at himself. I mean, he was not playing up to his, his normal level. But, yeah, they, it, was a, it was a monster of their own making, and they made the best of it now. Yeah. But they shouldn't have been in that situation in the beginning. Which is exactly the same thing happened with Philip Forsberg yeah, and, and, exactly. and Marnie Red. Like, did they need to make that trade or not? Oh. We, we still don't think so. We still think they were kind of overestimating where the team was at that point. Yeah. Saying, yeah, we just put Marty Erat here and we'll go from, you know, cup contender to, to cup definitely going to win it guy. I think they always over uh, overestimate their depth. Doesn't everybody. Like, Brian Burke thinks he's got a good team in Calgary right now, you know? <laughs> so, so the, uh, I'm glad you sort of bring that up because I think the probably the last topic we should hit is uh, we only have, like, what, 18, 19 games left? Is that where we are? Yeah, I forget. Yeah. Uh, so, playoffs or no? <sighs> That's not a good story. I mean, I, I'm, I have to be a no um, just from what I've seen. But Monday night is the beginning of the changes. Yeah. You know, Monday night they get an infusion – uh, they get an infusion of youth. Um, they get a creative guy. They have a guy that could potentially help a lot at even strength. I don't want to put too much on Kuzi's shoulders. Um, like has been playing lights out. Um, you know, you even wrote about uh, today how the Flyers, uh, you know, things could really change for them down the stretch. So I could I could see situations where they make it, but the defense is just. You know, I'm just not a believer in this team's defense. And they're not really making drastic changes to what those problems are, which is the thing. Like, my, my thing is, uh, if if there are problems and they're so freaking obvious, yeah, you, you, you should adjust. Like, the like the thing that everyone hated about Boudreaux is he made changes all the time. Yeah. But because he was detecting problems and trying to change them up, even if some of those changes were, you know, uh, maybe he was misdiagnosing them at times. Mm-hmm. But, like, with the Capitals this year, like, it was obvious from the – maybe the fifth or sixth game that Brooks and, and, and Brower played together, that they were not doing well together. Yeah. And they should have been split up. And, and perhaps it was just artifactual of Brooks's injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no matter what, they should not have been playing together. And they, yet they, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> they play together for another 10, 15 games. Like they don't make the changes. The, the fact that Connor Carrick and John Erskine were just getting clobbered on the ice uh, from the moment John uh, Erskine came back from injury to the moment yeah. that he went back out with injury. Uh, it, 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 it had been a big problem, and most of the shots that went against the team happened to them when they were on the ice for a fraction of the time, and they were facing the weakest defense, and they didn't seem to make changes. And and we, you know, and the, for the first, I would say, uh, uh, twenty days of the season, really to like the nineteenth of October, the lines were more or less identical every game. You know what? Let's take. Let's talk about something though positive about Carrick playing. Um, I'm not necessarily 
sold that he's a bad player. I think that he's very smart. I think he's a good puck mover. I think he needs to learn how to deal with his size at the NHL level. Totally agree. Uh, about, he really needs to continue to work on positioning. I think he's greatly improved on that. Uh, and the only way he's going to improve is, is I think, at the NHL level or getting a bunch of minutes at the AHL level. Yeah, and I don't want to dismiss him as a player. Um, I think it may be just entirely contextual that he is having trouble inside the OAT system. Um, but where I saw him having trouble is fending off four checks mm-hmm. and then dealing with loose pucks behind his mm-hmm. own net. And mm-hmm. those are the parts where the places where which should have been a one and done or should have been a clean breakout ended up being sustained possession for the opponent. Mm-hmm. Those are the things that those are the things that really scare me, and those are the things that lead to whatever four drawing the line with him, skating around, maybe trying to hit a guy along the walls, maybe waiting in neutral for a pass, but not really doing anything that they're supposed to be there mm-hmm. for. And that that's the stuff. You're, you're right. I, I don't I don't dispute that at all. So I'm, I've got ahead of me here. Um, uh, this is uh, our post from from April of last year where I was making the argument that Ovi should win the heart. Yeah. Did he, he did win the heart. Yes, he did. Um, that was a good prediction. So here we have uh, Ovi's goals per game, and it's sort of growing and growing. And then right around, it looks like game 17, 19, 20. And then again, again like game 28, he started going up and up. Like his his rates of, of goals per game went from uh, one goal every other game to uh, damn near every game. Really, like he had basically had two goals every three games by the end of the season. Uh, that picked up right around this time last year. Um, you can say off. Say Georgia off. Georgia. Georgia off. The dog Georgia is climbing. <laughs> you know what? She's not hurting anybody. She just wants to love you. What I'm saying is it was this time last year, obviously it was a different season because of the, the, the lockout, that Ovi started kicking some butt. It's to- it totally could happen again. Like we're at the point of the season that shooting percentages can get crazy and some player can get hot. And, you know, instead of it being like Alex Steen who came off, you know, like – like he was on fire at the beginning of the season and like was chasing Ovi for the Richard. Mm-hmm. Uh, we may, you don't, you really don't want that dog there, do you? No. <laughs> Georgia, come here, babe. <laughs> that that could happen with Ovi. Yeah. So uh, and that could happen with anybody at this point. So uh, I guess what it comes down to is, um, I've got all these snapshots about you know how many games we can expect the Caps to win and what it's the goals versus threshold for the rest of the season. Uh, a lot of that stuff matters less and less mm-hmm. the fewer games are left, mm-hmm. and it's going to come down to. Dudes who can make superlative efforts and have the freak hat trick. You know, we need a Matty Perot. Well, we don't have Matty Perot anymore, do we? R.I.P. Okay. Uh, well, when Matty Perot had that hat trick against Boston two years ago, that was a big deal. That was a game that the Capitals would not have won. Matty P or Matty P's tongue. That's true. Well, he did get the last of the, the three. <laughs> what I'm, I'm saying is that that uh, it's going to come down to stories and narrative over stats in the, yeah. the in the final run, which is okay. That's the way the game goes. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Uh, do I think the Caps are going to miss the playoffs? That's it for the podcast. <laughs> no, you got to answer. You got to answer. No, I don't think they will. Um, but I want them to, and I think you do too, right? It doesn't. I mean, no team. It's such a bad thing to say, like you know, um, uh, not winning for McKinnon. Like the most, yeah, that, those are awful. I can't remember. I can't remember the other ones. But uh, fail for, for nail. Yeah, there you go. Those are uh, just demoralizing for a team. Yeah, uh, especially like a team that has. You know, like a, a heart winner and a Richard winner on it, and and uh, you know a team that had been making the playoffs every year since two thousand eight. Stop saving for McDavid. No, that doesn't. That doesn't really work. awful. Is he is he this year or next year? He is next year. He's twenty fifteen. Yeah, he's twenty fifteen. He is gonna be. It's Connor McDavid. He's a, a stud. Plays with Andre Burakovsky. Yeah. Is 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 he making Burakovsky look better than he is? No, and that's the part that is really, really uplifting. You know, uh, I don't want to go into this, but I do want to go into it, is that a lot of people are talking about George McPhee coming back next year. And I was talking to uh, Chris and Igor today. We kind of had a discussion about it. And I said, you know, if they don't, ma- if the Capitals don't make the playoffs, look at everything that George has done. And then when you actually consider all the nuance of that, it's, it's kind of hard to not bring him back. Uh, if you look at the draft, they're drafting really, really well. Um, they are making pretty good trades. You know, the Forsberg trade was a bad one. We all agree that was a bad one. But it wasn't – they don't make those all the time. I think this trade deadline, it was very productive. That's probably a single worst trade of his career, and it's also the one that people remember the most. And, yeah. I, and I'll, I'll, also, I'll, I'll back you up. Uh, as far as, like, uh, picks go um, – you can write. I think uh, Corey Pronman, um, uh, I think he's with ESPN now, uh, uh, is ranks the Caps as like one of the top ten mm. uh, uh, prospect pools. Burakovsky uh, has, 
he's going to be a really good player. He it, he has already climbed up in my head, up around the Kuznetsov level. He is a sniper. He can really force What's his size? He is, I, I think he's six foot. But That's I mean, great. He, plays, and, he plays a big game. And you know my whole thing about like overvaluing <laughs> big prospects. I'm like, yeah. I'm suspicious. <laughs> uh, that I, I love to hear, you know, an undersized dude who can score. Hopefully he can. He's, he, is he going to go to Hershey? Yeah, he, I, I, he might make the team next year. I mean, he is he has really greatly proved that he hasn't really played that See, much with here, McDavid. Here's the thing though, that roster is really jam-packed at the end of next year. Like there's a lot of dudes whose contracts are up at the end of next season. They have and, to make some decisions. Right. And and so Do if, you want to go young? Do you want to go older? Yeah. Yeah. And 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 they're gonna do a mix of both, but with a ton of new guys coming up, they could become I mean, it could go it could go in two directions uh-huh, and both of them uh-huh. could be disaster. We'll, we'll, we will see. Anyway. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting time. Yeah. At the very least. I, I, Do you think that they will bring back George McPhee if they don't make the playoffs? Uh, so this is the prediction, what do I think will happen, not what I think should happen. Yeah. Uh, I do. I do think they'll bring back George McPhee if they don't make the playoffs. Um, that's, yeah. Um, Ernie Grunfeld situation with the Wizards mm-hmm. kind of informs that a little bit. Um, although I do think expectations are much higher for the Capitals. I think it's marginal. Uh, I, I think it's a really close one, but I would say, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like 60% confident <laughs> that they would bring him back should the Capitals miss the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think they should, though. I think, I, you know, I almost kind of agree with you, too, that um, while everything else is right, the draft, mm-hmm. he is a pretty good trader. Um, he's a stand-up dude. He's Look, a stand-up no one's dude. No going to deny that. It's a great locker room. Um, yeah. I mean, he's he's really formed a great locker room. Um, people people talk so much smack about the Capitals locker room. Like yeah. people like there's all this like whispering like oh yeah there's a bunch of divas <laughs> and drunks and this and that and the other thing and they're like no that's I, that's no. not the vibe that we've been collecting and like when I hear from dudes you know you hear about a bad apple like Bolsky every once in a while but as far as I understand it it's a bunch of really lovely lovely yeah. dudes that like to hang out with each other. I love going I love going to practice. Uh, but and you can I, see it in the videos that you cut the 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 uh, Olympic break videos. Yeah, those are dudes that were mellow yeah. and relaxed and genuinely liked each other like as much as like and Brower <laughs> suck together on the ice like when they're playing together they're both terrific players independently they love each other in the locker room yeah. and like you could tell it's they're hilarious. just they're pals but you know i think this is where mcphee fails is the depth is that um overvaluing yeah. the yes. the middle six of the forwards and the the bottom of the the defense he has not he has not built a hockey team he has built a lot of parts mm-hmm. that um, can play well at certain times, and you know, with with even the young defense, he signed a bunch of good guys. But then, you look even with Oates, he hired Oates, and the plan with Tom Wilson, I don't agree with. Um, just how they're handling the young defense right now, having Carrick up right now, he yeah. is clearly overmatched. And you have guys like Patrick Way, you have a lot of guys in Hershey who could step in and play better than him right now. Is this the time? to give Connor Carrick minutes. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, you know, and I still have a lot of faith in him. So I I've kind of lost I've kind of lost my my faith or my hope in in him building like solid depth at the NHL level. It seems like sometimes he gets caught up too much in with those grinder guys. Like he falls in love with guys who played like him when mm-hmm. when he was in the league. And you know, it's just we don't have enough talent sometimes, you know? And then you get, like, the... You still have, like, the DJ King signings. Like, stuff that you just go, like... like <laughs> the Volpatti signings. There's, like, pro Magnet... The, the extensions of Erskine for the like, Tumor. Anyway. Yeah, why? All right, so, listen, this is the end of the podcast. I don't want to send people down, <laughs> sent out on a bad note. Like, do we have anything that we can talk people up about? Yeah. Can we announce anything? Like, or no, not announce anything. Can we tease anything coming soon that may happen, like, at the end of the month? Or where are we with that? I, Without saying anything, we're gonna have a party soon. You heard it here first, unless you heard it somewhere else first. Uh, we may have one very soon in March. Uh, if not, we're gonna try to have one in April. There's uh, something so, right there. So there's something to be really happy about. We're on Instagram now. Let's plug that again. I w- I don't know why, but it, that's like the biggest deal in the world for me right now. That's great. I'm, I'm, your phone, like I, I imagine your situation was exactly like what my iPad was doing on Meteor Night. Like I was trying to go to bed, and it was just going like bling 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 bling. 
play. I was like, what? Really? <laughs> I had to I had to, I had to disable everything. But that was like it was like three o'clock before I could go to bed that I, night. I stayed up until three o'clock just staring at the Google Analytics that night. <laughs> I was like, there is twenty thousand people on our site right now. Stay up. Stay up. That's great. It's been a big couple weeks. Like not not to like talk inside shop, but like we've done ridiculous like Okay, if, if like hypothetically, if we were to throw a party, yeah, the last time we threw a party, it was a huge success. We had tons of people there. We were watching the Capitals, 300, 400 people, right? Yeah. We were watching the Capitals. Essentially, like they had already locked the playoffs, but then yeah. I think they beat the Rangers. Uh-huh. And this was two years ago at this point, right? Yeah. Uh, great turnout. Everybody had a great time. A couple people were drinking underage. Not going to name them. Not going to name whose <laughs> girlfriends they were. Uh, but uh, since then, our audience has literally quadrupled. <laughs> like. I'm not saying there's going to be like 1,200 people wherever we go. Yeah, I really hope But, not. but it's nerve-wracking. But, yeah. Listen, if you're looking to... Uh, if you're a single person in the metro area <laughs> and you're looking to make a love connection, oh, come to the Russian yeah. Machine Party. We have put multiple couples together. They're all lovely couples. Yeah, they are. They are. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, I, I'm i amazed. I mean, we have... The, you know, the thing when we first started We got this, Neil a girlfriend. Yeah. Right? I mean, that guy was hopeless. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But Neil. Nick, Neil, you're great, way cooler a great than couple, me. too. They're <laughs> yeah. like, they, they, yeah. And then uh, they're, uh, 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 Duchesne and Lindsay. Yeah. I, yeah. Make the really, love connections. We really do, minus some of our Facebook commenters. We have some <laughs> of the best readers in the world. And I'm not just saying that. Like, like when we it's crafted this blog, yeah. we, we really, I've really been most proud of the community. The fact that we can go in and have like comments and have yeah. like a hundred on like a Carl Alsner goal. And like post, participate like, in, in charities and like drive up charity auctions up, yeah. you know, 2,000 bucks. That, that means a lot. Like, we have. The tools. Do, by the way, if you have a charity that you're interested in, please let us know about it so we can help out or at least get the word out. If you're organizing a hockey tournament or you're, you're giving away stuff, let us know about it. The least we can do is just you know help boost the signal. Um, so, Peter, Peter will write those posts because I'll be too busy writing about Evgeny Kuznetsov making Alex Ovechkin do push-ups. And I, then, they're <laughs> playing pool. Was that what it was? They're yeah, playing pool. Yeah. I bet I could smoke those guys. Ugh. Like I want to play ping pong with one of those dudes. I bet I do. They have a ping pong game. Like you, you can't see the rec room. The rec room's off limits, right? Yeah. But I, I bet they have a ping pong table in there. I used to. <laughs> I used to have some moves, man. I could paint the freaking. Team sexy line. legs, son. Oh, that's. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All righty. All right. So that's uh, that's the Russian machine. The. All right. I think I goofed up the end there. Can we start over? Yeah. All right. From the top. So Ian Kuznetsov. You're just connected. Yeah. Bones. Oh. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Oh